But over the past six years, what we've uh-huh. seen is an adoption by other people, people who are not young people, people who we typically um, previously were not primarily focused on. So we've seen the market expand. Piggy vest isn't just for young people. Piggy vest is for everyone. Hello, you're listening to the Experience Pod. Uh, my name is Ada Irikefe. The Experience Pod is a 30 minutes one on one interviewer led podcast that discusses the adoption and utilization of relevant emerging technologies and trends for impact oriented professionals, researchers, developers, and students who demand realistic and thought provoking perspectives on the opportunities and challenges presented by these phenomena in our unique environment. We will be discussing digitizing the traditional savings box from savings to investment. Saving is one of the most common and most repeated bits of financial advice. An added that Nigerians seem to love is saving for the rainy day. An expression used to convey how savings prepares you for the financial emergencies. As children, we were encouraged to deposit monetary gifts with our parents or keep money in piggy banks. But studies are showing that despite these positive attitudes towards savings, Nigerians are barely saving. Gross domestic savings expressed as a percentage of GDP in Nigeria was reported at 21.66% in 2020, according to the World Bank Collection of Development Indicators. Our fellow African countries, Zambia and Gabon, performed 1.9 times and 2.2 times respectively better than Nigeria. Beyond Africa, India stood at 31.4%, which is about 1.5 times better. And Macau, a country that is the south coast of China, has the highest savings rate, almost three times better than Nigeria, with 64.3%. Based on the stats, Nigeria still has a long way to go in terms of savings. I am hopeful that growth is round the corner with the advent of fintechs. So today, players in the fintech space are transforming the way people save, spend, invest, and much more. They are disrupting the old ways with a strong focus on customer experience, driving convenience, and accessibility. Piggyverse is one of those players. They were founded in 2017, and ever since, Piggyverse has been helping Nigerians save and invest with ease by making it convenient to put away and grow funds. To talk more about driving the savings and investment culture through digital transformation. I would like to welcome the co-founder and COO of Piggyverse, Oduayo Ewe Ni. Hi. Oduayo, it's a pleasure having you on the Experience Pod. We usually start off by asking our guests to give a brief overview of their organization what do you do? How would you describe your organization and what is distinct about your operation? So I would hand over the mic to you. Invest is a savings and investment company that we founded in 2016. And the goal is to help young Nigerians save little amounts of money daily, weekly or monthly towards their targets. And more importantly, when they've been able to save In short bursts, like 90-day periods, we present them with micro-investment opportunities that allow them to earn more than they previously typically will not have had access to. So our core things are typically focused on affordability and accessibility. How do we make financial freedom a reality for all Nigerians, but more focusedly for more young people like us? Fantastic. So thanks, Odo, for that nice 
intro. So if we were to go a little bit further, would you say that your focus is on the youth and low earners? Are there any other subsets or group that you're thinking of in the near future? Right. I mean, I think that when we started, we started with a focus on our generation, young people like us. But that has evolved very quickly mm. since we started. So when we started, it was mostly young people come save here as a platform that, that can help you put together money daily, weekly, monthly in small bursts. But over the past six years, what we've mm-hmm. seen is an adoption by other people, people who are not young people, people who we typically um, previously were not primarily mm-hmm. focused on. So we've seen the market expand. Piggy Vest isn't just for young people. Piggy Vest is for everyone. Everyone who is able to interact with financial services on their phone can absolutely use our platform. So great. Thanks for that clarification. So Piggy Vest is for everyone. I know that initially when you started, it was more about the young ones. and It was really more about who is using a smartphone more effectively. So let's talk about your service offering. You currently have four different ways to save automated, fixed, goal-oriented, and how are they performing? Are there any interesting trends or patterns that you have observed in the last maybe three years? Well, I mean, I think it's fascinating how people have the same habits that they have with their bank accounts and their piggy banks, yeah. except they're more conscientious with saving on piggy banks just because it's separate from their spending money. So naturally, the two most used ones are the fixed and the flexible. So those are the two top ones. The goal-oriented ones are used, the automated ones are used, but a lot of people are more, I'm going to lock up this money or I am going to put this money here. It will earn some interest for me, but I can access it whenever I want. So those are the two top features on the savings side. So both of them are like top two, it's pretty much a tie, and then the other ones come after. So in terms of your investment services, I'm aware that you offer the opportunity to invest as low as 5,000 naira, which is quite unique in a variety of ventures and products. How do you choose the offerings you bring to your platforms and what are your customers' top choices? I think that it's mostly for us what kind of investments are high yield or high enough yield, safe, and would pose little to no risk to our users. So there's obviously other indications that the treasury and compliance team will use to select. But on the high level, that's how we even decide we're going to have a conversation with these people about being exposed to our users. So you need to be like, high enough yield because if they cannot get high enough yield from you, they might as well just like leave their money where it is. It needs to be safe and then it needs to pose little to no risk. So we're not like, when we say high enough yield, we're looking at like, how can we get our users 18% per annum when normal fixed deposit is like 10, 12, 13% per annum. Just something that's slightly more elevated that makes it worth it for them to lodge their funds there. And then it needs to be safe and pose little to no risk to use our funds. Basically, their funds must come back. And our users trust us to be able to make those decisions before we list on the platform. So they pretty much would like, we have investments that are completely bought out in a matter of minutes, not even up to hours. So it's really not about which one do they like the most, it's about which one can we trust Piggy Vest to have vetted properly before presenting to us? And we take that responsibility very seriously. Nice. Um, and that's actually good to know for people like me. Talking about trust, <laughs> at PwC, we are very big on trust. And you've talked about your customers trusting you put the money down and giving them the necessary returns and obviously their capital. How would you say Piggy Vest? has been able to initiate, manage, and sustain trust with users. I mean, there's been a lot of horror stories. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. How do you think you are sustainably reframing the way Nigerians think about savings as well when we talk about trust? So, I mean, I think that Nigeria is a very low trust environment. 
And when we started in 2016, mm. it was like never more apparent than then that we were in a low trust environment because the question that people had was, why okay. should we trust you, an electronic platform with no branches with our money? So I cannot tell you that this is the formula for building trust because it's an ongoing thing. Every day that people who founded Piggyvest, people who work at Piggyvest wake up, we wake up to continue to earn our users' trust. So it's basically a combination of two things, saying exactly what you can do. We don't make promises that the platform cannot fulfill ever. So we say exactly what we mean, and then we try to live up to those services. We take customer experience and customer success very, very seriously. We want each and every one of our users. And when we started, they were like 700 in 2016, but today they're in the millions. But like that doesn't matter because each one of them must feel like we are treating their problem as unique. We are treating your problem as, we're treating you as a human being and you are like not just talking to a brand, you're talking to the humans behind the brand and we're making sure that when you do leave after your problem has been solved, you feel like you were valued, you were welcome, you were listened to, and we fixed your problem. So customer experience and us continuing to make promises that we can fulfill. And then the, the usual daily of just continuing to exist, continue to make impact on our users' lives. So it's not really you do this and people trust you. I don't think that's a real thing. I think that every day you continue to work towards earning their trust and never breaking the, the one that you've already earned. Sure. And that's very true, Odoanya, because if you think about your growth in 2016 from 700 to million, I mean, if somewhere along the line um, you've broken trust, you're not going to end this number of people. You're not going to end their businesses. And these people that you've acquired along the way ultimately become your brand ambassador based on the trust they have. So, yeah, spot on. Thank you for that. Yeah. Great. So talking about, I know that recently, initially when you launched in 2016, you launched as piggybank.ng, so savings only platform. You've now rebranded to PiggyVest, right? And we've talked a little bit about you offering direct investment opportunities in addition to savings. What other services do you see PiggyVest offering in the near future and why? I mean, the rebrand from piggybank.ng, which was the name that we really loved, to PiggyVest was basically due to yeah. we want to be able to offer an expanded suite of services and we don't want to be limited by our name. And so we rebranded. Mm -hmm. And today it's very clear where we want to take PiggyVest to. We started with savings, we've added investments, we're adding other suite of products. And why? The goal for us is to become a digital wealth management platform, which means that we want the young people who we have on our platform, our current users, to not just be able to access savings and investment via the platform, but to be able to access other financial services. So we're going to move into other financials. If people can save their money in it or assign finances to it, then we will probably be headed there at some point. Okay, that sounds good. Um, so that's digital world management platform. I like that. And out of interest, did you remove the bank because you felt it was limiting? I, I really like the name Piggy Vest as opposed to Piggy Bank. Yeah, that's actually why we did. That's why we rebranded. We saw yeah, if you yeah. continue with Piggy Bank, there is the danger that people will see you as providing banking services and we didn't want yes. to be constrained yeah. by that. Yeah, it makes sense. Cool. <laughs> Great. So my next question, and you talked a little bit on where you talked about looking at smartphones in terms of your audience. Now, so what I'm hearing you say, you're leveraging on people with smartphones and bank accounts. Uh, I know looking at your app, you have more than a, a million downloads, say, for instance, on Google Play Store. But what about the 80 to 90 percent of the Nigerian population who do not use a smartphone and 36 percent of Nigerian adults? who do not use any form of financial services, such as bank accounts? What are your plans for them? 
Honestly, we have been thinking about that. And the idea for us is we don't want to treat financial inclusion as a buzzword. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you we have X plans. No, we really have to put some thought behind it. So I've never approached the unbanked as people who don't have, who don't bank. I think that the unbanked are currently banking and so should not be actually referred to as the unbanked. I just think that they do it differently than the rest of us who are in the formal yeah. banking sector. And so I believe that Piggyvest in its current state isn't suited for the unbanked because it is built with people who have bank accounts in mind. If you are going to build a yeah. product for the unbanked, you have to speak to the unbanked and then build a product that meets their habits, that fits their habits, that fits their lifestyle, that fits their needs, just like Piggyvest fits the lifestyle habits and needs of people who have bank accounts. So while that is something that we consider and we're seriously considering, we're not trying to make them or force a square peg into a round hole in that we're going to just build uh -huh. a light version of piggy vest and tell them to use it. I don't think that's appropriate. I think that a more appropriate thing would be to listen to them and then build a platform or tailor a service that actually fits their needs. For instance, you cannot tell people who live on less than $3 a day to save their way into prosperity. That's false. It doesn't uh, work. So uh, you need to figure out what do they really need and how can a service like ours edit itself to fit their lives, to fit their habits, to fit their needs? And so we've been thinking about it and it's not a, a step that we take lightly and it's not a step that we would take without having a full-fledged solution. Well said, really. It's a case of just focusing on your core and if the opportunity arises, then will you dovetail into that area. So question again, we've talked a little bit about customer experience and I know that we are also big on huge factor for customer loyalty. So in fact, it's been said that 86% of buyers are willing to pay more for a great customer experience. I fall into that key as well. Customer loyalty is becoming less about price and quality of product, but more about who consistently provides the most personalized friendly experience. How is Piggyvest differentiating its customer experience from other traditional and non-traditional players? Are you using technologies, for instance, to achieve this? I mean, I think that a great illustration of that, and yes, absolutely, we are using technology, is how Piggyvest grew in its first five and a half years based on word of mouth. Hmm. So we've experienced incredible organic growth between 2016 and 2021. So one of the ways that you can illustrate like the consistency is how people constantly, without fail, recommend Piggy Vest to their loved ones, to their friends, to their families. You can open Twitter and you'll see several tweets of people saying, oh, I sat down with my mom and I put her through. We're not paying them to do that. Mm -hmm. They're doing it all on their own. And that in and of itself is very illustrative of the relationship we have with our users. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And how much trust they've like lodged into the platform enough that they are willing to spend time and allocate energy to bring another person onto the platform. The only answer that I can give you is consistency. Why? Because there are several products that kind of offer similar to what Piggyvest offers. But people time and again choose Piggyvest consciously and then inspire other people to do the same. So there is a lot of things that we've built into the product, like I mentioned. Affordability, accessibility, ease, seamlessness, customer experience, and all of those things. But more than anything, I think we've built in consistency and that shines through to the users. No, fair play. Consistency is huge, and that's enough to customer loyalty. So let's move into technology. Let's talk a little bit about technology. And thankfully, we're in the era of where technology has just taken a front seat in everything we do. And if we talk about technology and te how technology has also gone, allowed us to go beyond mobile and internet banking, and venture into digital finance, if we talk about what you've also mentioned, digital wealth management. CBN has recently released eNaira, I think a discussion for another day. And these days, all you hear, we talk about cryptocurrencies, either Bitcoin is achieving a new all-time high, 
or new currencies being developed on the back of the blockchain technology. Like I said, technology is at the forefront. How do you see these developments affecting the rate of savings and investments? And are there plans to leverage on blockchain in your service offering? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think that those things will do anything but improve the rates of savings and investment. I see them as complementary. New technology, for the most part, should not be treated as suspicious. New technology is almost always complementary and almost always progressive. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, yeah. Ah. So I'm very excited about the prospect of like blockchain and what it means for us and then for like just the general Nigerian populace. It represents even more freedom, especially for young people. It puts power in your hands. That being said, we're a regulated entity. So what that means is we are also bound by the laws of the land. And for as long as there's restrictions on cryptocurrency trading in Nigeria, we will unfortunately not be able to offer it. But I can say that the moment it's lifted, we will be the first to make sure that our users are getting the benefit. <laughs> nice. Well, someone once asked me a question and said, what's your biggest regret or what do you wish you had done maybe like a couple of years ago? I said, really? I, I wish I'd understood Bitcoin more. So, <laughs> so I guess you're ready. Once we're good to go on Bitcoin, then... That's it, or cryptocurrency as the case may be. So my next question, we've talked about emerging technologies like blockchain, but then you also have AI, IoT, Internet of Things, and you also have big data analytics, which are making financial processes easier and more efficient, reducing things like errors. We've talked about how technology has made customers interact better. Are you currently using any specific emerging technologies to innovate in your service offering? And from your experience, which technology do you think has the most potential to transform the market? I think that if you are a fintech company, you are, what's it called? You're definitely always using new technology and not in ways that you particularly notice. There's a new thing launched every day and you figure out new ways things fit into your business that it's using new technology is almost seamless for us. That in, in ways I can't even begin to isolate, like communication with our users has been much improved with the advent uh-huh. of like new products and new technologies. How we build apps, uh-huh. how we push updates to apps. Before, we had to get people to go to the app store every day to download a new version of uh-huh. the app. And that still subsists, but for, a, for like smaller updates, we can push it here. And a simple logout login means that people have gotten the updates. So I think that, yes, we're constantly using new technology to improve upon the app. Like usually just like moving forward and adopting them so fast that it's actually really hard to kind of isolate, oh, this one is new, this one is old. True talk that technology has just penetrated every aspect of the way we interact, whether from a personal or from a business point of view. So my last question on technology, recently, Facebook has rebranded itself as Meta. Meta, Meta, whatever we want to call it to align with his new focus on the metaverse and is supposedly a merging of the physical world with XR, AR, VR, and blockchain. And apparently this is going to change the way we interact and work and live. What are your thoughts on this metaverse? And just like the internet accelerated transformation across sectors, do you see metaverse twirling the tailwinds for any financial trends? I used to play game sims quite like a lot growing up and even still now. So I'm very <laughs> familiar with the concept of being immersed in a different universe for extended periods of time, which is what the metaverse really is. Okay. And so virtual reality becoming mainstream, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it's for everyone, but I think it has its uses. I think mm-hmm. that you can certainly find application for it for people who are, for whatever reason, immobile, can go like to places that they would like to see. Being able to experience it regardless from where you are is an experience that I think will prove valuable. And so, again, it probably won't become as mainstream as we in tech would like to believe, 
but I think it will find some use in like several specific use cases. And that's a good thing. Interesting. Like with anything, we'll wait and see. But technology is definitely catching fire. So I know that this would also make the necessary headway. So let's step it down a little bit. As part of the experience pod, we normally would ask, we call them three compulsory questions. And they're supposed to be fun questions, not necessarily related to your areas of specializations, but you can tap into that if necessary. So my first question would be, what was the last prediction you got wrong? The last prediction I got wrong. I mean, I don't typically like to predict. I only do it when I'm forced to. So I, I actually can't remember any predictions I've gotten wrong <laughs> because I'm I'm not in the habit of making predictions. I'm mostly pessimistic, so I don't like to speak okay. too far into the future. So the lockdown happened and you said, nah, the lockdown is, you know, it'll be over in two weeks. No, I thought it was going to be longer than two weeks and I was right. <laughs> okay. So what's the prediction? Well, maybe my last prediction was the one I got wrong that Bitcoin was going to hit 100K by December. I don't know if I'm going to be right, but it's currently dipping. So I guess that would be the last one I got wrong. Okay. Well, we're not yet in December, so let's see. I will remember to to send you a text message just before. (laughs) Okay. So the second question would be, what's one view you seem to find very few people agree on? That's a fascinating question. One view that few people agree on. Well, I don't think few people agree on it, but I think less than should agree, agree on it. And that's one of the best ways to lift people out of poverty is capitalism. Okay. I will probably talk more about that. But that's an interesting one. The last question, and from our last guest, Onye Kakuma, who is the CEO, he asked our guest, he wasn't sure who the guest was, but he says his question is, if if you could go back 10 years and change something about yourself, what would it be? If I could go back, I would for a particular period in my life, I wouldn't have bent as much to satisfy people as I did. I recovered from that, obviously. I no longer do it. But for a short window there, clearly, I was very... Clearly, in- clearly. <laughs> I was very intent on people approving of me that I would bend over backwards. Uh, that doesn't help anybody. Certainly didn't help me. And I don't encourage people to do it. So that's what I'd go back and change. Nice. What would you say? I mean, and I'm hoping that a lot of young ones, because mm-hmm. I like your response, and that's so prevalent today. What's the one thing you would advise the young ones? And what's the best way to overcome that if you had a one-liner? Is to be self-aware. Just know Mm. who you are, know where you're going, know why you're going there. And once you know all those three things, it's very easy to remain yourself. It's easy for you to resist external influence and you don't have to like edit yourself as much to fit into situations or circumstances. Fantastic. Sorry, I had to clap at that. So they say that disruption is interrelated. And in that respect, what's one perspective you'd like to get from our next interviewee? We don't know who the next interviewee is, so it's any question. From the next interviewee, I'd like to know their thoughts on the evolution of the Nigerian tech ecosystem. It doesn't matter if they are in tech or not in tech. I'd just like to hear their thoughts. Okay, so that's assuming that our next interview is in the tech space, right? No, I actually think that the most interesting perspectives okay. about tech come from people who are not in tech. That's true. Okay, so we'll definitely keep you posted. Just listen out for the next question that will be answered. But we'll, we'll definitely keep you posted on that. So I want to say a very big thank you, Odoanyo. Thank you so much for your time. The questions and your answers have been extremely enlightening. I've definitely learned quite a bit. For some reason, I, I would put my hands up to to say that I actually thought Piggyverse was more targeted at the younger ones. But you've dispelled that, so I'm going to download my... Thank you. I mean, I'm definitely going to keep doing what you're doing. It's a great job you guys are doing there. 
And at some point, we would like to see you guys go way beyond, not just Nigeria, as far as you want to. So thank you so, so much for your time and do have a wonderful day. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you.